<laughs> Welcome to another episode of Chase of the Wind. I'm Pastor Mark. Let's see what the Holy Spirit is up to. So, I just finished reading through the Minor Prophets and started reading through the book of Joshua in the Old Testament and uh, came across this. Remember, Joshua is uh, Moses' successor and a uh, young fellow who's been uh, uh, molded and mentored by um, Moses to kind of take over. And uh, he's getting ready to take Jericho. They've just crossed the Jordan at flood stage. And that's a great story as well. But there's uh, this part in Joshua chapter 5, verses 13 to uh, 15, that stuck out at me this week. And there's little phrases that jump out at me. And I want to just talk about it for a minute. So let me read it to you. Now, when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword in his hand. Joshua went up to him and asked, are you for us are, are you for us, or our enemies? Neither, he replied, but as commander of the Lord, of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Then Joshua fell face down to the ground in reverence and asked, what message does my Lord have for his servant? The commander of the Lord's army replied, take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. So here's here was the interesting thing to me. Um, first of all, Joshua, uh, you can tell how bri brave Joshua is or uh, incredibly stupid. I'm not sure. He, so he, he goes off and he's kind of preparing himself mentally uh, to get ready for this, this uh, plan to take Jericho. And he looks up and he sees um, this man standing here. Okay, that's a good thing to do. You want to kind of keep your, your uh, be aware of your surroundings. And he sees this guy stand there with a sword. What does Joshua do? He walks up to him. Now, I can tell you right now, I'd be saying, I'd be looking over at him and saying, are you a friend or a foe? Well, Joshua goes right up to him. How interesting. What if he's your foe? And he lobs your head off or th runs you through with his sword. I bet you that's a phrase a friend of mine knows. Runs you through. He likes swords. I won't mention any names, but his initials are Andy. Fred. And uh, so he runs you through with his sword. Uh, or, you know, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't. But Joshua says, ask him a question. It's a good question. Are you uh, for us or are you, uh, are you for us or for our enemies? So he's trying to establish, is, is this person uh, for us or against us? And here's what I find fascinating. The response of the angel, the messenger of God. Neither. Wait, wait, what? What? It can't be neither. You can't just be neutral. That's unheard of. You, you will make a choice. You have to choose. Why would the angel say this, give this response was my question. Because it's a very interesting response. Um, we got we to do a little theological reflection here. If the angel says, oh, I'm for you, then that means he's against someone else. And if he's for Joshua's enemies, that means he's against Joshua. But he's a messenger of the Lord. And so you got to ask yourself, how come he won't take a side? Obviously, Joshua is on the side of God, and so this angel should be on Joshua's side, right? That's just natural. That just seems to me the, the right thing to do there. But that's not what the angel says. He says, the NIV that I'm reading out of, I'm reading out of the old one from 1984, says neither, uh, some translations say no. And interesting that it says that they translate it no. 
That's like uh, coffee or tea. No. Mm -hmm. Or yes. Well, which is it? Yes. It, it's it's not a n yes or no question. It's a, you, you're missing the question here, Mister Angel of the Lord. And he says, "No, I'm the commander of the Lord's army." Oh, so you're on my side, Joshua might think. But he didn't say that, did he? So Joshua might be, hmm. But Joshua's pretty wise later, and he just waits. He goes, and the angel says, uh, I'm the commander of the Lord's army, and I have now come. Hmm. So Joshua could very easily assume that, oh, he's come. He's coming to meet me. So he's on our side. He's going he's gonna to tell us we're going to win. But he doesn't say that. He just says, no, I'm the commander of the Lord's army. No. Are you a friend or an enemy? No. I'm the commander of the Lord's army. There's, there's kind of a huge theological implication here. Is God's not choosing sides. Ooh. That'll mess with us, won't it? In our world, in America anyway, of, well, you're either conservative or progressive or you're or a liberal or you're um, a Democrat or Republican. You can't be in the middle. And even if you are an independent, you're probably leaning one way or the other. You got to have a side. We like to do that, too, in Christianity. You're either... A Christian or you're not, and other religions do the same thing. Either you're this or you're not, you know, you're a, a heathen or you're an infidel or whatever you want to call it, or you're not. So the angel says, no. Are you a friend or are you a foe? No. So what does that tell us about God when he sends a messenger and we're praying, God, take care of that evil person that we perceive to be evil? Now, now, spoiler alert here, uh, read the rest of this uh, chapter, go to chapter 6 and read the fall of Jericho. But the, the, the commander of the Lord's army does not come in to say, here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and I'm going to take care of this for you. He says, here's what God wants you to do. And so that here's almost, if, if we were to really look at this and, and, and see this, he goes... Uh, Joshua sees who he is, and he fell face down on the ground in reverence and asked, What message does my Lord have for the servant? And he says to him, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy. Here's the deal. It isn't a matter when the messengers of God come, whether they're on our side or they're on someone else's side. The question is, whose side are we on? Because I, I think what's going on here, the angel of the Lord says, this commander of the Lord's army says, no, I'm the commander of the Lord's army. I serve him. I don't serve you, Joshua. And you need to do the same thing. Do angels serve us in, a, in, in essence? Yes, when we serve each other, we are in essence serving God as well. Okay, whenever you give a cup of water in the Lord, name of the Lord, you've done it for me as you have others. So we're serving, you know. But the angel of the Lord wants to make sure of something here. And I think it's an important thing before we start going into taking on big tasks for God or any, even small tasks for God. Whose side are we on? Are we acting as God's friend? Or are we acting as God's enemy? Joshua wants to know, is God on my side? Are you someone who, uh, and maybe he just doesn't understand who he is. He doesn't recognize him, he, and, and that's okay. That's okay. But at the end of the day, we have to ask ourselves a question. Whose side am I on? Is what I'm doing part of God's plan, or is it my plan and saying, God, bless it? And we like to do that. And there's nothing wrong with making plans and asking God to put his blessing on them. But we need to also ask ourselves the question, are we doing this because it's what God wants me to do? You know, that sometimes when we don't know what to do, we go by that we, we have to just hang on to that uh, Psalm. I think, I think it's Psalm 34. Uh, it's in there. Trust in the Lord and do good. I remember hearing uh, 
a preacher say one time, he goes, trust in the Lord. You know, when you don't know what to do, you trust in the Lord and you do the next right thing, the next godly thing that you know that God would have you do, the next right thing. But the commander of the Lord's army, he is saying, uh, he's also saying this, I believe, uh, Joshua, you might be the commander of Israel's army right now, but I'm the commander of God's army. And you're, if you're part of God's army, you're going to do what I tell you, not what you tell you. Ooh, that's called sanctification, people. That's called, and we, we Westlands call it entire sanctification. It means, God, I'm, I'm entirely yours here. I'm surrendering to you on this one. And that's what the angel of the Lord, the commander of the Lord's army is asking Joshua. He goes, are you surrendered to God? Are you, are you God's friend or are you God's foe? We, we, you got to decide this right now before I give you any instructions. I, I need, I want to know whose side are you on? Because it's easy to get all self-righteous and assume that our cause is the right cause. It's called humility. We need to just stop and say, God, am I, am I approaching this the right way? Am I looking at this the right way? And, and Joshua does an amazing thing. He sees what's going on. He goes, what message? He falls to the ground face down in reverence. That is one thing that I feel like we have lost today in the church. Probably myself too at times. There is an on reverence that we have lost for God. That this is the God who can take us out if he wants to, but chooses not to. This is the God who, here, more important than that, you want, to, you want something that God can really take you out with? It's not that he can take you out in death. He can do that. But you know what? He takes us out in life. He, he loves us enough that it just, it can waylay us. <laughs> that when we experience God's love, it's just like, wow, that should create awe and wonder in our lives. More. No one, I had that song going through my mind the other day. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. I've been cared for by a lot of people, but no one ever cared for me like Jesus. And so Joshua falls face down in reverence. He realizes, wow, I am. And then look what the messenger says. He says, take off your sandals for the place where you were standing is holy. Has it, did he, have we heard that somewhere before? Didn't Moses have to do that once, the burning bush? Folks, I'm going to suggest to you it's time for us to take off our shoes. Fall face down before the Lord and say, God, I am, I am your servant. What, does the, what message does God have for his servant? Servant. Notice Joshua doesn't say, what message does God have for the commander of Israel's army? He knew, I, I am taking a subordinate role here. I'm taking a subordinate role here. Because here's the thing. If, if, doesn't God want all people to come to Christ? That no one perish? Um, Jesus said, if whoever is, is, uh, is not, uh, who is for us is not against us. And we draw lines, don't we? Well, this person must be my enemy because they don't think the way I do. That's another problem in our country. Oh, I can't like you because I was just joking with, with Mel about because someone told me he didn't like dogs. He, he, he explained it. I said, well, I don't think we can be friends, Mel, if you don't like dogs. He's my friend and we, have a good, we had a good laugh about it. But oh, we decide, well, if they don't think like me, they must be my enemy. And we forget that God, the people even that we disagree with, that God loves them very much. God chooses, does, does not like evil, that's for sure. But aren't we all created in the image of God? And so we need to remember that God is, he, he may not like the evil that other people do. And sometimes he probably doesn't like the evil that we do. <laughs> oh, no, I'm pushing it. Maybe God's not always happy with the choices we make. But we like to think he is. Well, I'm following the Lord, so what, I must, what I'm doing must be right. Except for maybe when it's wrong. We were having a discussion down here earlier about uh, people sitting in other people's pews. and one, one person was sharing how 
Someone got, left the church because someone sat in their pew. Is that, does that please God? Does that please God? We could argue that's kind of a form of evil because it's not what God would have. God said, go sit somewhere else. Just, I'm glad you're here. So folks, I want you to really ponder today this question, whose side are you on? Know this, Jesus is on our side. As he loves us. He loves all people. But the question is, do we love him and are we on his side? And let me encourage you this way. If you're not, if you, if you're not sure, then I'm going I'm to suggest you pause and you have a talk with Jesus. Better still, let him have a talk with you. If you've never given your life to Christ, give your life to Christ today. Just say, you know, Jesus, I give you my life. And if you have and you're struggling with it, Jesus, uh, I surrender to you today. Whatever I'm holding back, I surrender to you, and you have me entirely. Sanctify me. Make me holy. Make me more like Jesus today. And take away the things that are not like Jesus and fill me with your perfect love. So I'm going to leave it right there, wind chasers. Until next time, I'm Pastor Mark. Keep chasing the wind because the wind is chasing you. Grace and peace.